Welcome to the Starting Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Shelton, aka Dark Logos, and this is the show where you look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. Yo, uh, it's uh, it's been interesting uh, here lately. Uh, had a very good Fourth of July. Ended up uh, going out, uh, got some uh, foods and stuff. Uh, ended up uh, visiting some family over the last few weeks. Uh, and just sort of taking care of some general business, uh, trying to get stuff ready to go for uh, the upcoming school year. Come to find out, my upcoming school year is delayed. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I still got school prep work things to do. Some of those are uh, uh, big deals. Uh, some of those uh, are, are not... Uh, but, uh, those are things that are on the table that, you know, uh, I, I get to be away from school, but gainfully employed. So I'm thankful. Um, at the same time, it's just like, yo, uh, there's still stuff that has to be done. Uh, and again, I will also say it is, uh, the taking the ultimate ownership of, uh, why haven't there been shows? It's like, well, uh, I haven't, uh put anything out, uh, primarily because th there hasn't been much to talk about in my opinion, but, uh, also like I've been focusing on other stuff, uh, trying to, uh, get that, uh, you know, several positions in play and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, that is also, uh, you know, stuff that is on the table as, as well. So, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's been interesting. I've uh, also been trying to uh, get back into the gym um, and lose weight. Um, I'm starting to see negative health effects from uh, being in Corona mode. And I know some of you'd be like, yo, you said you weren't going out or anything like that. And uh, realistically, I hadn't. And uh, because of that, I've, I've been sitting a lot uh, and I, I knew I was in the danger zone. I set, well, I've been in it. I'm technically in the danger zone still, but, uh, I stepped on the scale and I hit 299. And that's a big deal for me because I said to myself, I'm never becoming 300 pounds. Um, I briefly stepped over that and within like the last four years and I was just like, no. Um, and you forget how much um, your activities were actually keeping you going. Like uh, a school day, as stressful as it is, I was at least walking 2,000 steps minimum per day. Uh, when looking at going out dancing, I'm at least getting another 2,000 steps on top of that. Uh, you know, going to exercise in general, at minimum, there is, you know, 800 steps at minimum, you know, so like the the cost of being at home uh, is starting to weigh on me. So when I go out, you know, I, I sanitize up, uh, I wear my mask, uh, I am up on my my gear, um, I keep my stuff maintained. I don't just, you know, do things willy nilly. Things have their place. I still do not walk through the house with my shoes. Um, I take them off at the door. Um, those are important things to keep my house clean or cleaner um, and whatnot. Uh, so uh, also life lessons, you know, inside a, a apartment gardening and uh, sucking that up and so there's, there's a bunch of things. Uh, I even tried to like look for a house, potentially, even though everything in my gut says wait until next year to buy a house. Uh, so uh, just looking to see like what is in the general market and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. So that's what's been going on. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about two things if, if I have time. Um, first and foremost is Rock Cup, and then second is PJ's Tournament, and uh, what I would argue is the evolution of play. 
So uh, let's let's sort of get into it. And uh, I'm going to throw my hat into the ring on the Rock Cup conversation and, um, and, and put it like this. I believe as a player, we should have a open competition in the spirit of competition. Never before in the history of Hero Clicks have we had a true world champion. Never. We can we can say, look, oh I won Wizard Worlds or I've won uh, you know, the world championship that was held here. But, like, let's let's not huck-a-buck ourselves. How, how many different international players didn't have a chance to show up because of visas? How many international players didn't have a chance to show up due to economy, work schedule, whatever? You know, like, name them off. Every person that you thought had a chance to be a contender... What happened? Low income, not able uh, to get the days off work, uh, probably didn't have the figures, didn't have the community. There's no excuse now. Whoever wins this tournament is the best player in the world, period, bar none, no questions asked. It doesn't matter who wins WizKids World because we know due to the, the field size, that if we are to measure a person, not by the, the size of their wallet, but by their ability to build their teams and pilot their teams and put the work in and recognize the modicum of luck that is necessary for them to be there, we can see the true test of a lot of players. And I think some folks will be found lacking and some folks will be found to be surprisingly abundant. I think, personally, in, in saying this, I give up an insane advantage as a person in this community by pushing for this. And the main reason that I feel that it is necessary not in a sense of equality, uh, of value of, of the player inherently, but to, to do one thing in particular is to finally prove who's the best. No stipulations, none of this, oh, if only I had blankety blank blank. Oh, if they didn't stop this or oh, the, all the excuses are off the table. All the excuses are off the table. You got time to take off. And some of y'all are working from home. Okay. So, so when, when we're, we're really talking about the nature of being competitive. Let's go. Let's let's have a full on out once per generation war. Get your clans together. Get your tribes. Get your teams. I do not care. Let's go. And if you don't have that spirit, you're not a competitive player in my opinion. Because you want to know who really is the best and where you stack. And we're mostly men. There are some women that play, but we're mostly men. And we like that battle. So let's do it. Now, I will also come back with this. Recognizing the position that Howard is in and WizKids is in and all this other stuff. Here's the following. I propose this to The Rock. Give everyone the chance to vote with their money. 
None of this BS about, oh, they should do stuff and, and the people that whine on realms but never go play. Those punk people. Forget them. Forget them right now. Vote with your wallet. And I would say this to Howard. Howard, put out a press release and say, if I hit 200 people 200 people for teams, no pictures required. 200 people signed up for teams. And if I hit, let's just say, 180 people signed up for singles, no pictures required for singles. If, and by, let's just say, August, August 4th, 5th, whatever arbitrary date you want to set. And you'll update twice a week about how many people have signed up. And then you'll have people vote with their wallet. Because the people, if, if people want to be like, I don't have the stuff, but I want to play, then put your money down. Stop being a little whiny punk and throw your money down. I don't got the money to find somebody if it's that important to you. If not, you shouldn't be even thinking about this game. You got basic survival needs, honey. You got to think about, go work on that, dude. Okay, go work on that. Okay, but don't don't be putting your, your, your mouth out there like, you're, like it matters. If you can't get the 30 bucks together or the 60 bucks. Okay, just do it. Is this a premium event? Heck yes, it is. Heck yes, it is. This is as premium as it be, as it comes when term comes to online tournament. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Like if if you cannot get excited for this, if if you cannot get motivated from this, even if you're like, yo, man, I'm a scrub. I would say this, can you make it to the top side of the mountain? Are you on the top 50%? Like that's the one thing that keeps me out of despair when I look at my skill set sometimes. It's like, did I make it past the, the 50% mark? And I have. And sometimes I've made it in the top 25%, <laughs> you know? Okay, but that's... This is important. And, and, and for all those folks that want to be, you know, talking about equality and, and, and all this other stuff, guess what? You need to throw down them, them dollar A's or else you're just full of air. You're full of air. You want folks to, to bend and, and capitulate without putting anything out there yourself. That's cowardice. That's tyranny. So, in this situation, we have, a, we have a chance to make real impact and real benefit. If you put in a little email to Howard to be like, look, set, set a 200 person benchmark. Set a 200 person benchmark. And, and then and then make it clear in almost every language you can. This is the goal, and this is when we gotta get the money by. I'm not saying you can't enter; you can enter up to the day before. But if you, if we hit that number, this is what's happening, because you have to make it worth the incentive to them. There has to be a mutual incentive. And I've talked about this multiple times on the show about if you're going to become a better player, you know, sometimes you need to forfeit the prize support to keep your people encouraged so that you don't over poach. You, you'll just cause your game uh, environment to, to just go under. And a lot of folks are going to be like, but it's an online game. And I'm like, yes, it is. But for folks to consider to do high level events like this, people have to throw down money. 
This stuff isn't free. And thinking in a free and cheap mindset really stops a lot of people from, from reaching the points of success. I want people to work with me for free. Okay, you'll get free level advice. If, if I opened it up and I said, guess what? This is, this is Dark Logos uh, one hour session. And I said, they're free or reduced cost. But I'm gonna, it's going to be an episode of Starting Over Podcast. I would have a ton of people come up to me and be like, yeah, I'm interested. And then when I put their air, their entire weaknesses and all the things that they need to work on, they would probably ask me to take the video down. Because the concept of free is nice if you're getting premium benefits. But when folks treat it as, you know, you're receiving good and they treat it in the same level in which you're paying, then folks get insulted. I don't expect the person at McDonald's to be super nice to me. I didn't pay for that. But when I go to one of these premium places and I'm taking a date there, and if that server doesn't call me sir, if that server doesn't refresh my drink, if that server doesn't give me two waters because I asked for two waters, I will say something because I'm paying for an experience. So uh, again, I think that this tournament is probably the most important tournament that's that's happened in the last ooh, at least five years, five to six years. Because now, now there is no questions. There's, there's no BS resources. There's no, oh, hey, hey, here are ID cards. He, he won because ID cards. No, all of the punk excuses are gone. All of them. So whoever wins, there is nothing you can say to functionally take it away. Oh, we got special objects. Really? This is the special objects that game changing. Mm-mm. They're not. They're useful. They make some characters worth a lot more. But they're not, they're not inherently broke in and of themselves. There's some that are push, pushing it, but no. There's no Galactus that you have to, to think about. When he comes in and messes up everything and everyone complains about stuff again, no. Finally, folks will be judged purely on their merit. And that is what's most important because that's true glory. None of this, I can't get a hold of a starro. None of this, I can't get a hold of uh, a Faust. I can't get a hold of a troublemaker. I can't get a hold of 80 trouble alerts. I can't get uh, this one figure that's an ultra chase. I can't get a Kobik, I can't get this gym, I can't get an Ultra Chase Thanos, none of that. All of that is gone. All of it. And then we'll see what happens when those people that have Batman and Iron Man superpowers, which is the power of the wallet, when that is no longer able to be leveraged. Do I believe that every tournament should be held like this? No, I don't. But I do believe this one should be. Now, no, I have no problem with people that buy product. I have no problem with people that spend a ton of money on product. I have no, I have no issue with that. But I, I do believe, I do believe that in this situation, we have a true ability 
to find out who we really are. Who we really are as players. And I think that's wonderful. So that's that's my open letter on this. Uh, so I, I'm I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, so let's talk about PJ's tournament and the hilarity um, that is going on with this. I need to have PJ on the show. So this is the uh, Critical Clicks tournament, and uh, on the Critical Clicks tournament, uh, there is it's already started, and. <laughs> And, and so, uh, winning builds, you can go and look at winning builds. Uh, so, uh, there are tons of different uh, reports here of uh, various uh, different teams that are put up. Uh, but the first round, I believe, is everyone trying to get as much stuff out in the first uh, round that they possibly can. And uh, and so I, I think there there is uh, some, some lessons to learn about uh, this type of format. Now, would I want WizKids to adopt this type of format? Um, no, I don't. Uh, but I do think that this is something specifically from an online perspective that I feel will showcase uh, players uh, building abilities also showcase uh, players uh, flexibility now there are some individuals who play same teams over and over again or slight variations of the same team again some folks might be saying I'm calling folks out I'm not there's nothing wrong with that uh, but the ability to flexibly maneuver between multiple teams and then uh, even more so play with different mechanics is important. Um, and I think that from a recruiting aspect, and, and I'm throwing this out there to anyone that's listening, um, it's gold. It is literal gold. If you're able to sit and watch a player that has advanced to third round that's unaffiliated in this type of format and you are looking for a builder that is a moderately moderately good player, I I would definitely, if I hadn't already recruited my people, like I would be looking at the third third round guys and be like, okay. What did you build? Why did you build that way? What was your score? How did you perform? Why did it go down the way that you thought uh, it, it would go down? You didn't know your matchup, and yet you read the, the remaining meta like what? So there, there's, there's some really good intellectual exercises found um, in... Uh, this section, uh, uh, and sorry, in this section of play, in uh, looking at like the stuff that's won. So let's let's take Tim Bold's team for example. Let's start off. He he's running uh, Ultra Chase Black Widow. So we already know she was going to be out uh, on in the first round. You got your Steve Rogers. You have your Medusa. So Medusas are gone. Voyager is gone. Then Micron, Peggy Carter, Black Vulcan, uh, and the Trouble Alerts and all this other stuff. Okay. So we already knew that trouble alerts uh, would, would all be gone. Troublemakers would all be gone. And the fact that they are gone is, uh, is very important. But here, here's the interesting thing. If you look at his team, his team is a Black Widow build. And it utilizes Black Widow in a more traditional format and you're not trying to depend on Black Widow carrying everything, okay? Black Widow is useful, but Black Widow is not, uh, how can I put it? 
the Black Widow and in the trade crafts and all that other stuff is in in the stealth is not the only thing that that team is based around, and there are a lot of flexible options. So um, I. I, I have a, a, a long-term respect for Tim Bold as a player. We've played multiple times, and he's beaten me multiple times. I think I've beaten him a handful of times. But the thing that I will, will say with Tim Bold as a player is that he is hyper-flexible over his, his team, here's years of play on Team Failboat. Um, and being, you know, one of the premier uh, 3v3 teams. Uh, I mean, if you don't know who, who Failboat is, you know, I'm sorry for you. You know, like, they're really good players. So, when I look at this team, I'm like, hey, this is something that is different. Not only that, he won with it. I would like to follow this player for his next two games. Now, I know T Tim is affiliated, okay? I would not try to recruit Tim Bolt. But what I will say is you would look for players like this, okay? And I know, and and, and, and I'm going to go back to PJ Sermon in a brief bit, and, and uh, some, some folks have uh, made fun of us, which uh, the joke is you have a bazillion players and you have all the best players and blah, 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 blah. And... Uh, I, I point out is it's like only successful people have haters. That's one. It's a mark of success. Uh, number two, uh, when when I got Matty G, no one knew him. Uh, when when I got PJ, hardly anyone knew him. Uh, when I got Lucas, only a handful of people knew him. Uh, when I got George, I knew George for years. You know, it's it's like I got Steve and Tony, you know, based off of a, a acquisition. OK, if you want to argue anything about picking up, you know, established players, you can make it for George, Steve and Tony. But but the truth of the matter is how many people are looking at PJ Lucas, Matty G um, as the people that they are now? Versus the people that they were three or four years ago when I was scouting them, when I was talking to them. Okay. It, it, everybody wants an Instagram model wife. Nobody wants to deal with when the makeup's off. And, and that chick doesn't have, you know, her butt surgery, her lipo, and her, her chest surgery. Okay. So, uh, again... I'm not saying I made these men. I didn't. But I provided a, a environment for them to grow and encourage them. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to like give a nudge, nudge for you leaders out there. And, and yes, Dustin, I'm going to slightly call you out because you've been a little bit bitter lately. Yo, homie. You need, you, need to, you need to find and cultivate another person like you for Clicksman. You, you need to get on Micah and up his game. You need to rub Caleb's back a little bit. And you all need to freaking, you know, Trinity Force that together and, and uplift your team. Because you all have the mindset and the manpower to, to, be, to be ridiculous. You all are ridiculous. Let me rephrase that, not to be ridiculous. You all are ridiculous. But to to not see what you have not and, and, and not only that to not push forward and cultivate uh, more folks along your lines of skill set it requires work it requires investment it requires time and that's a that's something some folks don't want to hear but I think Clicksman that's capable I fully believe it's capable now, again, like I said before, I'm bringing this up because this stuff was public. If this was private, I wouldn't even be talking about it. But this stuff is public. So if folks want to recruit, because Clicksman picked up Esteban, 
which I am glad for. I am super glad for that. Okay, not because, oh, Esteban, we would have picked up Esteban or, oh, Esteban deserves a team. No, but I believe that the Clicksman organization could benefit from another person that is able to compete with Dustin Cedars and Caleb and Micah and give them a different viewpoint and give them that kick. Give them that kick. And then rally the cause. Because again, you're casual and fun. That's cool. You get casual and fun results, which is more based off of raw talent. Based more off of raw talent. But if you wanna you wanna retain people, you gotta have a social interaction. MMOs taught you that. I have a good retention because we have a good social interaction. And if I retain you, you get better over time. How many people are able to wait five years on return of investment? Like real talk. Can you can you wait six years on return on investment? So there you go. And it's not an insult. I want to say this. Dustin Cedars is is a is a very uh, eclectic, creative, uh, and visionary player. He is. Caleb Reddick is is probably a very uh, is is a very not probably he is he's a very devoted uh, play by the fundamentals mastery level player. He has core concepts that he does not falter on. Micah is able to be adaptive to high level play and play what is needed. That is a core that you can cultivate a great team off of. It's a great core you can cultivate a team off of. You combine that with Mike Eskew in, in the leadership position, it's just about enabling growth. That's all it is. But you, you and folks want to talk about size of teams and whatnot. It's like, look, Clicksman used to be the largest team, them a juggernaut. If folks fall off, folks fall off. Okay, cool. But you have to go back out there and encourage people to be part of your culture. And if they, if if your culture isn't appealing to other people, then you need to figure out why. You either accept it or change your culture. And I'm not saying Clicksman culture is unappealing. Because they, they're cool cats. But there's things that you have to have talk from an organizational perspective. And then people have to talk business and put they, their feelings aside to do what it requires to win. And sacrifice time. So this is one of those those things. So like going back, so I'm, I'm gonna scroll up through this. Because you can you can still join this Discord, which is a critical clicks Discord. And if not, I mean just for research purposes. Like, I think this whole entire thing is ridiculously wonderful. Uh, but, uh, like, let's go to the first game. Um, one of the first games that was won. Um, here we go. We got Lucas. So we got Immortal Hulk, Ace, Magneto, Dark Phoenix, Tri Sentinel, Octopus Arms, Influence Ring, <laughs> excuse me, Heavy Object. All right, so that's standard. We've we've seen this be played a bunch of times. Um, then we have Jeremy, who has E Tree, Dark Phoenix, Wendigo, uh, Danger Room, Magneto, Tri Sentinel, Ace, uh, Immortal Hulk. So he he pretty much just had the same team as Lucas, uh, almost the same team, except he had E Tree, and uh, again. Uh, we have, uh, if I'm looking at Jeremy, which is a great guy, uh, had him on uh, teams with Phoenix Nest before for team events. Great guy. I don't know if he's unaffiliated or not, but I do think if you're looking for a recruit, uh, Jeremy Waters is one. Uh, Walters. I said Waters. Uh, Jeremy Walters uh, is, is a good one. Um, if, if you're looking at uh, this dynamic, okay, cool. He He's... Pretty much say like, all right, well, this one, I'm going to play this. 
uh, and I'm going to put in my adaptions where he had his own adaptions already in place. Okay, so uh, Loyal Miller, Jason Wingard, Jean Grey, Emma Frost, Dark Phoenix, Sully, Hellfire. Oh, no, wait, Ruler, uh, Q, I Keep the Trains Running, Spectral Ring Mandarin, uh, Daimonic. Oh, yeah, they Captain Marvel, Isaac, Machine Smith, Miles and Gwen, Legion, Dark Phoenix, Black Vulcan, Gorilla Grab, Brainiac. All right, so, so this is a very interesting team. Because you're you're responding to the existence of Batman, and you still want to do your jank, and you need to approach, uh, need to have Jean Grey approach safely. Okay, now no no Tri Sentinel, which I'm sort of salty on because I think dropping Q for Tri Sentinel is better, but I understand Q. Okay, uh, so. Uh, yeah, Machine Smith is now gone. <laughs> but so, so, so there you go. There's, there's a good team. Uh, again, I don't know if Loyal is on, a, on a, on a team. Uh, and I'm, and I'm doing this on purpose. I'm doing this on purpose. Uh, is that I want us to look at like what one round one for us to get a, a peek at the meta, but also to no one can say, oh, Dark, Fe uh, Dark, sorry, not Dark Phoenix. Phoenix Nest is only picking up good players when there are tons of good players. It's just no one wants to do the legwork. So I, I am I am functionally turning this into the the junior combine for hero clicks utilizing critical clicks. OK, because all the data is out there. Okay, you can look if you if you are wondering about a builder, you could go look at a builder. You can go and analyze to see if that's something that you want in a player. You can look at his win record, all these different things. You can look and compile the data and then ask yourself after round two or round three. And if you want to pull your shot after this round, go ahead, shoot your shot. At least you tried. Okay. You know, you don't have to worry about, about Phoenix Nest getting you guys because we're done recruiting for the year. We got our people. But look, here here we go. Uh, we, we got Julio uh, um, Matanez. Again, I butchered your last name. I apologize. We got, we got Captain Marvel, uh, double Captain Marvel Black Widow build. Okay, cool. All right, he won. If you're just looking for a pilot dude, this might be your dude. Okay, now again, Julio, he might be on a team, okay? He just might be on the team. I don't know, all right? So here's Devin, um, Devin Owens. He has double Jason Wingard, double Magneto, Dark Phoenix, Tri-Sentinel, Tri-Sentinel. Okay, so he's got a Hellfire Club team. All right, so so there, that's a, that's a nice build. And do you see a lot of that? No, but... Uh, you're plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus seven. So that's a reasonable theme in the current format. Now, there are some that like eight, eight, nine, ten. Those teams are a little bit harder to pull out. Uh, like you're running Sentinels to Justice League uh, when you start going into those higher numbers. Uh, I'm not sure on X-Men, but mm, I don't, and, uh, you, don't quote me on that one completely. All right, uh, so here, here we go. Punisher War Machine, the man inside is the real machine. Uh, Immortal Hulk, which I think that is a very interesting pairing. Uh, Magneto, uh, the Soul Gem, Dark Phoenix, Everett K. Ross, Influence Avengers. Uh, this is Michael S. in the Discord. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, shout outs to him uh, because that's different. That is playing good stuff and winning with good stuff. So again, I don't know if Michael Les is on a team, uh, but if he's not and you need a decent pilot and a, and a builder, you might want to hit up Michael Les and ask him, hey guy, are you on a team? Okay. Now, note. I would also say is if I mention your name, okay, and you're not on a team, okay, if you haven't shot your shot to try to join one of uh, one of these other teams, 
okay? Then you need to think about this. So don't get offended when 80 different guys come in and, and ask you to join their newly founded team. And, and I'm going to make it clear. Teams that are newly founded are still can still be great teams. But it comes down to is, do you want to create your own legacy or do you want to be part of somebody else's legacy? And it's easy to go either way. It's easy to go either way. Okay. Uh, and, and do they have the culture that you feel that you're going to be productive in? You want to join a team and the guys, you know, are practicing, you know, one day a week and you're playing four games a, a, a day. That's probably not the team for you, homie. OK. But if you play, you know, three times a month and you just got into these online events and then you have somebody that's like, look, uh, we play twice a week at least, then that's not going to work for you, homie. If you're not into letting people borrow your figures, certain teams just may not work for you in the general. So I'm just letting you know, like, be prepared. Be prepared for what comes at you. But if you have a specific team in mind that you want to join and you feel that it would be a good fit, I can I can give you a list of teams that I would recommend. I would recommend Clicksman. I would recommend Ragnarok. Ragnarok seems like they're going under a transformation period. Uh, their newer players are doing pretty well. I would rec recommend pretty much all the Texas team. You're east, eastbound down, earthbound and down. Um, I would also recommend uh, Pushing. Uh, I would also recommend uh, Juggernaut. Um, and I think Juggernaut's sort of in an a, a adjustment period right now. Uh, so uh, that is that is my short list. That's not my exhaustive list or anything like that. Uh, but in particular, you know, if, if Pushing can take you know people from outside of that you know, East Coast area, I think it would be, it would be helpful for them. Uh, now, I know like some of the Pacific Northwest people, uh, they're getting, you know, their, their stuff together and, and trying to put that pressure on Majestic's format. Uh, I get you. So if you want to, you know, find out about that area or you're interested in more of the Majestic's format, you might want to look and, and try to join Majestic's. Um, if you're willing to deal with the expectations that Pat has for his team. That's it. I mean, it's something to to legitimately think about is, you know, can you meet up to the expectations of leadership? So anyway, um, let's let's keep uh, looking. Um, I'm on a, a Tyler Spees. Uh, Kenny Minx is on a team. Uh, I think Denny is on the team. Uh, do, 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 do. Caleb. Okay, I don't know this Richard Stanley guy. I don't know if he's on the team or not. So, all right, here we go. We got an Immortal Hulk, Double Wendigo, Tri Sentinel, Dark Phoenix, Doc Ock Arms, um, Ace. And uh, influence. Uh, then we have a influence ring, Magneto retail, Iron Avengers, and WWE ring. Okay, so that's that's not bad. You're creating a situation where you're very melee focused, and I guess you're. Uh, I, I don't know what your Batman plan is, um, but hey, it's it's a thing. Uh, so what, what are we seeing so far? We're seeing a lot of Mortal Hulk. We're also seeing a lot of Jason Wingard. Uh, so it's, it's quite interesting. Um, let's, let's keep going here. David C is a great player. I don't know if he's on a team, um, but he plays a lot online. And I think if you're looking for a creative builder, uh, for your organization, David C might be the guy for you. Uh, to help you get out of the, the meta stagnation. So here we go. Here's proof of that. Uh, double Onslaught. Yes, I did say Double Onslaught. He won. Uh, Wendigo, Wendigo, Wendigo. I, I played him. I played him using this build in um, another tournament. In in the last tournament. Uh, crap. 
the the uh, Clicks Mafia tournament. Yeah, I keep the trains running. Yeah, so so okay. It this team is a lot stronger than a lot of people think, and if you win map, it's it's almost oh if it, it's almost over. It's it's so hard dealing with this team. Okay, because you're dealing with a double onslaught, and he has he plays like a three heavies, so he will just TK you for free. So you, you have to be ready for that to happen. He can do a double tap in a turn. So, yeah, like David C plays at night. Good player, healthy attitude. I would recommend him for the draft, you know. Okay. And, and truth be told, if PJ does this next year, and Lord willing I'm alive, I'm, I'll, I'll do this as a draft day. Like, I, I kid you not, if that's something that you all want to see is a, a Hero Clicks draft, let me know. I'll put a level of production behind it and everything. All right, so uh, let's see. Zach Coffee from Clicksman. Here we go. He's, he's on a team, but he ran Amazo Remaker. Now, I don't know how many points his Amazo is. Remaker, Iron Avengers map bonus. No, oh, 41. This is Gold Amazo. Remaker Ring. Iron Avengers map bonus. Um, GLSF. Uh, I think those are the chases. Yeah, yeah, those are the chases. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, they're they're the chases. Uh, yeah, they're on the side for, for the Super Friends. Okay. So, Zach Coffee. Has one with Gold Amazo. Which I must say to you, bravo, sir. Bravo. Uh, and Avarice says, uh, spectrate, spectated, can confirm. <laughs> oh, man. So there we go. There's there. That's pretty good. Here we go. Here's another cat. Zach Zach Straw played Onslaught, Double Eddie Guerrero, Doctor Claire Finn, Remaker, Venom Symbiote, WWE Arena. Okay, so so if if we're looking at some things that have popped up, what are what are some of our common figures? Uh, we can easily say yeah, Trouble Alerts, blah blah blah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, but we're seeing Onslaught. Which the average player would have said, that's trash. But the fact that Onslaught is able to show up and has a chance of going against a standard team is very interesting. We're also seeing a lot of Hulk. We're seeing some Jason Wingard. Um, we are seeing Dark Phoenix retail. We're seeing Tri-Sentinel retail. So we already know that Tri-Sentinel and Dark Phoenix are by far some of the two best uh, figures in the game. So we're, we're seeing super confirmation of that. Okay, so here's Matty G. She's got Jason Wingard, Dark Phoenix, the Atom, Micron, Wendigo, Duke Thomas. Yeah, Tri Sentinel, Time Gem. Yeah, see, this is a is a is a very well designed team. Uh, I think Matty put it together himself, so I have to give him a, po a pat on the back. Uh, if not, whoever did it on the team, I give you a pat on the back. Uh, yeah. So, all right, so I think it's Jesse Cote, Jesse C. Uh, he's a Texas player. I don't know if he's on the team. And Jesse C, if you're not Jesse Cote, then all right, I'm sorry. I jumped to conclusions. All right, so yeah, here we go. More Jason Wingard. So, so right now, it feels like everybody is super comfortable playing Jason Wingard. Okay. And he provides you enough options and enough control to win win you games. And we're seeing Jason Wingard with and without Jean Grey. And I want to make that crystal clear. We're seeing that him played with and without Jean Grey. So anyone that's like, well, hey, double Jason Wingard is, is maybe bad or I have to run double, double Jason Wingard with Jean Grey, I would really encourage you to look at this list of information 
because this is this is telling us fundamentally now I know this is not a full tournament this is just one round and then it's gone and all this other stuff but we can leverage this we can leverage this information because what it is telling me is that the common player is saying to themselves I am going to have enough options with Jason Wingard uh how can I put it? I'm going to have enough options with Jason Wingard that I can overcome various situations and then uh, I can do various other mechanics as well and build around it. Uh, so, or even more so, it's like I have these, you know, following plans for Jason Wingard. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, I think there are multiple offenses that are put out there. So again, this is another Immortal Hulk build, which is super tiny, tiny. Matt, okay, so I, I can barely read it, but uh, Matthew, Matthew DePaz. I butchered your name. I'm sorry, homie. I'm sorry. All right, so uh, here, here we go. Uh, Immortal Hulk, Daredevil, Magneto, Mister Sinister. Uh, then I uh, retail Magneto, uh, Octopus Arms, Influence, WWE Ring, uh, Iron Avengers. So here, here's another interesting fact. Just, just a sidebar. Iron Avengers is by far the number one, uh, uh, sorry, map bonus that I've seen played. Uh, and, and it's no surprise because, you know, free attacker or free pop, uh, prop, you know, you'll take that all day or be able to generate more attackers. But the fact, the golden fact that this is a, a common occurrence. I think that we need to take assessment of that. Like, why aren't we seeing like Reign of Terror as much? Uh, you know, uh, why are, you know, Skull Camp is, is obvious because those are on mind control teams. But why aren't we seeing the other map bonuses in rotation? So, so yeah. All right, uh, next up. You got, let's look at this next team. Okay, so DJ, the man rigging from Juggernaut, Mr. Waddle, uh, not himself. Uh, Gratz on the, him. I think he, he had a kid recently. He had a son. I think he already had a daughter. He already has a daughter. I think he just had a son not too long ago. So uh, Exodus, Magneto, Magneto, Magneto. Uh, 50 point Magneto, Jason Wingard, Exospecs, Di Demonic Ring, Reign of Terror. There you go. There you go. So we have a very aggressive uh, Exodus build. Uh, and uh, Wes Summers is one that's really pioneered Exodus. And it's good to see DJ pick that up. But again, Look at look at what also is being played. Like this is another time we've seen these twenty five point magnetos just show up and create issues for their opponent. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Paris Gordon, uh, Mister uh, Ragnarok Loki, trolling himself. He has Ultra Chase Thanos. Mr. Oz, two Dark Phoenix, and he played one, two, three, four Brainiacs main force. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this. This is brilliant. No troll. This is brilliant. Uh, and, and what he is showing us from the design, number one is Cosmic is still there as a, as a team. Your spam, unfortunately, is a $100 piece. A, AKA Brainiac, but utilizing Dark Phoenix as your follow-up uh, aggression, you should be able to take on a good amount of things. Not all the things, just a good amount, okay? So I, I like this. It gives some backup to Thanos. All right, uh, here's Peter M. I don't know if you're on a team, Peter. Uh, I'm going to shout you out. 
uh, you know, you might be getting some some DMs. Uh, so yeah, all right. So here we go. Another like good stuff. Good team. Immortal Hulk, Prime Batman, Ace, Magneto, Dark Phoenix, Tri Sentinel, Doctor Octopus. Again, like yeah, this is the same thing as Lucas's build, uh, or very similar. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, Andrew K, Thanos. So actually, come to think of it, I think this is the second, second or third Prime Batman I've seen. Uh, but I, I want to point out, which is sort of interesting, Prime Batman is not as popular as Hulk. And Prime Batman is not as popular as Jason Wingar. And my question is, is why? And I know some folks will say, like, well, it's easy, you know, Dark Logos is that, you know, Batman hasn't had the time in the sun as much. And then also Hulk is a murder machine and that's just how it is. You know, some things will never change. I, I get that. But in particular... Um, Hulk has some disadvantages uh, that could possibly be leveraged uh, on a Justice League team. Possibly. I'm not saying guaranteed. So uh, it's something to think about. All right. Um, let's let's keep going. Oh, okay, here we go. Here's another good one. All right, so Thanos, Chase, Ultra Chase Thanos, Soul Gem, Q, Oz, two Dark Phoenixes, 300 points exactly. So this is Andrew K. Andrew K, again, you get shouted out uh, on, on the show. Free clout today. Free clout today. Free clout today. All right. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, because Peter M admitted that he just copied Lucas's build from the uh, the Clicks Mafia event. Um, let's see here. It's another Tommy is yeah he's playing the the Mortal Hulk build. Um, yeah. So here we go. This is interesting. So let's talk about Simeon. Um, I don't think Simeon is recruited on the team. Simeon Bruce is a very excellent player uh, who is a high-quality uh, player out of, uh, I think it's the, the wonderful place of Nebraska. Uh, and uh, I'd like to point out his team is Gorilla Grodd. This is Main Force, mind you. Uh, or hold up, wait, is it? No, this this is this is his Main Force build. I don't think he put his whole build on here. Or did he? Oh, nope, nope, that's his sideline. So so here we go. Uh, Dr. Fates. Uh, one, two, three, four, five Fates. Tri-Sentinel. Two Tri-Sentinels. And... Oh, crap. The rest are Wendigos. The, re the rest are Wendigos. Okay. And... Uh, I think, functionally... Uh, that that is a huge like like yeah when you start talking about plus theme, you're you're almost guaranteed map, and you're you're going to have extended starting area and the fact that you're not trying to equip early on is a huge deal, um, and you could just go straight into it and the doctor fates are giving you action economy uh, to leverage. So I would I would pretty much say that this team is deceptively strong if you have the figures in real life. If you don't, that's fine. But I also think like the it is a little bit expensive because of the Wendigos. So this is a, a at least a five hundred dollar team. I I presume uh, maybe not five hundred three hundred. Two fifty, two hundred and fifty dollars. So, um, 
but yeah, I, I think that 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 is a very interesting design. But let's let's point out something. We've also seen a recurring theme of Wendigos in Doctor Fates in Tri Sentinels. So like these things are good, but people are utilizing them um, to the max. All right, so wh what does this show us? This shows us that mystical fate is a thing. Uh, in your standard 300 point meta. I think the other thing that we are able to look at is how flexible mystical f is still and how much more oppressive mystical is because of fate. Like it's, it's stupid. So those are also some things, uh, some things to think about. And I know some folks will be like, well, ah, uh, whatever. Uh, it's not that great. I was like, I do want to point out that you functionally have a wall of linebackers blocking access to your tri sentinels, and if you have any other colossals, you could just enhance up. Uh, you can enhance up your tri sentinels' uh, damage to shoot at other colossals uh, if they're not, you know, just retail. So I, I like to point that out. All right, so let's keep going, and, and we're almost at the end of the list that I'm, I'm gonna be looking at. So we have uh, another Onslaught. Here we go, Onslaught, Wendigo, uh, three Wendigos, Proteus, Immortal Hulk. Yeah, Monster Team. So uh, again, we're seeing the similar themes. Onslaught, Wendigo, Immortal Hulk. I think this is the first Proteus that I've seen. So yeah, like the, the creativity or, or even we're seeing what's coming up to the front. Now, I want to still bring up, why are we not seeing an insane amount of Captain Marvel Black Widow teams? And I think for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think that is the gatekeeper. If you can't be a, a Black Widow team um, with Captain Marvel and all its variants, I think you're going to have some problems. The other thing I think that it comes in is, is that those builds did really good for about two to three online events. So everyone that's probably playing this is a lot more prepped, okay? And I'm just gonna say that realistically. So, and, and also you have burn, team burnout. Like, you know, you get up so far and you're just like, look, man, I don't wanna play this for a fifth event in a row. You know, uh, and so I'm done, okay? So so that is is something also to think about. Okay. Yeah, like it seems like everyone's just getting a Mortal Hulk out of their system. Um, yep, yeah, here we go. Double Captain Marvel, Black Widow, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, oh, here's a Starro team. Aaron Morgan. Um, Aaron Morgan, I know you're on somebody's team. I see your name too much. So, Cosmic Theme Team, Starro, Mr. Oz, Star Girl, Star Girl, Dark Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, Q. Yeah. So, there's some there's some good stuff there. So, so what what do we see? Okay, Dark Phoenix and Q are semi popular popular. Q is not as popular as he was uh 6 months ago or or even almost a year ago. Um Q is realistically just sort of falling off. And I think in part that's because of Black Vulcan. Um, Black Vulcan just popping in and just being like, poison you dog, you're gone. It's like, be gone, thought, boo, you know, like that. Uh, you know, that's that's what Black Vulcan does. He, he lays down uh, the, the, the thunder slap across Q's face. And, and that's scary to deal with in the current situation. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna do one more. Uh, jo oh no, you're playing Black Widow. Yeah, somebody, somebody made a team that they shouldn't have. Uh, they put it on a freaking phone. All right, I'm gonna have to blow this up. So give me a second. This is the uh, can't read this team. Uh, this is by John Nazario again. John, if you're on a team, let me know. So onslaught, 
Prez Ricard. Prez Ricard, which is interesting. Proteus, Proteus, Proteus. So the 20 point Proteus is two Wendigos, then one, two, three, four, five 10 point Proteus. Uh, yeah. This is very interesting. And, and again, it's a uh, monster? Yeah, monster team. So the fact that I, I think this is this is the interesting thing. Uh, John came to a similar conclusion um, that the other team that we talked about with the Dr. Fates came up with is that I need action economy because I'm running like a bazillion little piddly dudes. And yes, I do get some things from free from Onslaught, but I still need to be able to reposition. So the fact uh, that, you know, again, you're, you're sharing a similar mindset that Press Ricard is, is giving me action economy so I don't break my theme is uh, huge. Uh, it's, it's really, really huge. Now, the other thing I think that is also a statement, you know, for from what we've seen uh, recently, um, is that the classic mindset that having a bunch of colossal retaliators, Simeon, sorry, buddy, I forgot your name, and I just talked about you too. I'm sorry, but have a coke and a smile on me. M maybe no coke have that smile on me. But uh, we're actually seeing whole forces uh, or majority of forces that are comprised of colossal or giant figures, which the, the older axiom was is that you don't want to play um, lots of those figures because they're just easy to shoot, target, kill. Now, there are disadvantages. Like, the Batman matchup is hell for you. It just is. Okay. Uh, but, like, look at what's going through. Do we see an abundance of, of Batman? No. I think what we're seeing here is, with the multiple Wendigos being played, they're solving for Hulk. They're solving for Hulk. And, and to deny that is naive. Um, they're also solving for action economy in various different ways. Excuse me. There's some for action economy in, in various different ways. Now, would I also say that the mystical version is probably stronger, like Simeon's mystical version is probably stronger than John's version? Uh, that's to be seen. I, I can't tip it one way or the other. But like I said, I think there is some interesting analysis here that any, any team builder um, in a major organization should be taking stock of if these are the things that folks want to get rid of round one. Like I would be running a tally. Like, how many times did each of these figures come up? And then just say, like, ooh, okay, this is super popular. This is super popular. This is this is sort of popular. Oh, this is moderately popular. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think that we probably should, like, move on. Like, like if, if we're testing, if we're not making teams that consist of these top... 10 figures, we have to be even more on the point or establish that there is a figure or series of figures that have broken um, the mindset that makes these figures popular. If, if you can't establish that or think about that, you're going to have a problem, okay? You're, you're going to have a serious problem going into uh, Rock Cup and you're going to have a serious problem going into Worlds. Now, that's that's what I personally feel, okay? N you know, again, I, I normally don't like, hey, man, 
here's some help with your, here's how to run your organization. Because I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. Because there are many things that are not organic to many organizations. But I will tell you the truth. A organization that takes advantage of this data here, because it's all public, PJ is, is transparent on it. And when he does his, his mock-up of figures that are banned, um, you know, that's going to be a big deal. Uh, and you're going to see, you're going to see what is the, what is functionally right now, the snapshot of the meta. And, and I'm round one's ban list and round two's ban list will give you a definitive view of what is viable in today's game. I'm not kidding. Round three and on, that's that's a test of skill in piloting. Okay. And if you start seeing no names or people you don't know or haven't heard of outside of round three, yo, you know, you better you you, know, you better look at that. That person, like like you know, a thirsty dude looks looks at an Instagram model. You know, be like, ooh, you need to you need to figure that out. You need to figure that out. Okay. All right. So that's it for today's show. I um I, I thank you all for listening. Um, it you know I got some of the the, the preachy out of me just a little bit, just a tad. Uh, and I feel that we should be able to get a good level of analysis from this setup. I think that uh, we have a lot of information uh, that can be extracted that is super useful from this tournament. And I'd like to thank PJ for putting out this tournament um, because this... This is the gold mine of information that we need going into uh, more serious events. All right, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna uh, say, hey, y'all, thank you for, for listening. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at StartOverPod. It came from outer space uh, and it told me, man, you need to get, dude, why are you still here? Go to the gym. Uh, yeah, I need to go to the gym. My body is feeling it. You know, I've been sitting down for an hour. Um, next, uh, you can email me at starting over podcast at gmail.com at starting over podcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it uh, 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 awesome, baby. Uh, let me know what you want me to talk about next. And, uh, yeah, uh, that is, that is it. Uh, so remember. <laughs>